Ready? <laughs> okay. Let's get started. Cue camera. Okay, I want to ask you something. Um, how many people know anybody famous? How many people know, like, politicians? Met a politician? How about a movie star? How about a uh, musician? Yeah. How about uh, um, uh, like a scientist or a Nobel Prize winner? Oh, right. How about somebody who's won the uh, MacArthur Genius Award? Okay. Wow. Yeah. You'll you'll meet him later on. In the, court. the older you get, the more people you meet. Uh, that's true. <laughs> but you know, the more you forget about him too. <laughs> <laughs> So today I want to introduce you to another famous person in the area of public service. Okay, I'm not kidding. So, and her name is Olenka Villarreal. And Olenka um, has an uh, undergraduate degree from Pomona College and an MBA from uh, Golden Gate University. And after she uh, went to school, she spent 18 years working in startups in, in, the, in Silicon Valley. And when her second daughter, Ava, was born with disabilities, she turned her focus to improving the quality of life for people with disabilities. And to that end, Olenka serves on the board of directors for the Palo Alto Unified School District's Community Advisory Committee for Special Education, and also on Life, life Services Alternatives in San Jose. And she is the Vice President of Friends of the Palo Alto Parks. And in June, Olenka was presented with the prestigious Jefferson Service Award in recognition of her efforts to make the Magical Bridge playground a reality. So this is a really great person. And she's a person with three fireplaces. So with that, <laughs> I'll introduce Olenka Villarreal. And she'll um, introduce us to the by far the nicest introduction I have ever received, so thank you very much for that. I'll try to I'll live up to your, um, <laughs> your kind words. So really welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Dave, I mean, what you do with your class, Dave, is really remarkable, and it's always so gratifying to see so many students that are actually interested in learning about and uncovering ways to make um, places more accessible and discover new solutions to make life easier for so many. We were hoping the park would be complete by this time, but you can see we're not quite there. Our opening is scheduled for mid-March, so you're here at a great time because the paths are sort of there for us to walk around and roll around. Um, but as I, I'm going to start you off in a moment, but let me introduce you to the magical friends that are here on the premises with me. Um, first, I want to introduce you to my dear friend and also um, I mean, this park wouldn't be happening without my dear friend Jill Asher, who's been taking on um, many roles, but um, primarily the social and media outreach. We've had a lot of good press, and and um, it, it's really a, a big reason why we've we've been able to do what we've done. So Jill Asher is here, and um, also Barbara Butler, who many of you met coming in. So Barbara is. Um, a builder and artist and she uh, was really the first person that I selected in my mind when I was thinking about this playground. Um, Barbara designs and builds tree houses and playhouses. She's in South San Francisco and um, it's a beautiful family and local company. They um, make their own uh, oil stains which are non-toxic. They um, use beautiful redwoods. And so Barbara has built over 600 original designs of playhouses and tree houses, but this is the very first one that is wheelchair accessible. So we think it's about time, and she's promised us it won't be the last. She's no, gonna... I've tried all along, but it's very hard to get people to go with the budget. Yeah, so, so we've got the budget. budget, we're doing it. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay, so. What I'd like to do is invite you to sort of ask questions as we go along. But has any have you guys taken a peek on our website or any of that stuff? I mean, is, is any of this going to be familiar to you, or should we just assume you don't know anything about the park? Yeah, I don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> so, 
Okay, so the, I, I mean, just in a nutshell, I won't belabor the point, but you know, we really did um, create this playground out of a desperate and urgent need to create a park in this community that was even wheelchair compliant, ADA accessible. Um, you all know about the ADA law that was created in 1990 that was supposed to mandate that public places are wheelchair accessible. Um, Palo Alto out of the 34 parks didn't even have an ADA compliant uh, playground, which we feel is um, incredible, right? And so the um, challenge too is that that primarily addresses the physically impaired, but there are so many other people in our communities that are not even considered when designing a public park. And um, that includes one in 64 now that are being diagnosed with autism and visual impairment and hearing impairment and sensory issues and all kinds of different things that make a child not feel safe and welcome in their public parks. So when the city gave us this space to do what we wanted to do with a playground, um, we thought, you know, if we're paying privately for it, which we raised the $4 million privately, we are going to build the kind of park that we think communities should have, and that is a playground that accommodates everybody's abilities and disabilities, but does not feel so sterile. I mean, you've, how many of you seen those wheelchair accessible playgrounds that are just terribly sterile? They just have ramps, and, you know, it's probably fun to go up and down a few times, but then, you know, there's not much to do there. So we wanted this to be everyone's favorite park, but if you happen to have a disability, um, you can do everything here. So, um, okay, so without further ado, I'm just, uh, maybe, should we actually walk in the direction or do you want to stay here and I can point? What's easier for you guys? So, uh, circle the right. Let me start you um, off in the entry closet and then we'll go over there. Last time I was here, they were just breaking the ground, so all this stuff is like, like new. Fernanda. Hi. What's her name? <laughs> Fernanda. Oh, Fernanda. Oh, you've got some big wheels. Welcome, Fernanda. So Fernanda's coming through the entry plaza. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the entry plaza is actually the place where, where's my friend Eric? 
Uh, so your class, the gentleman that stepped forward to maybe um, work on this with us, we're looking right here is going to be sort of this entry map, which we envision to be something very innovative that if you're hearing impaired, visually impaired, you'll be able to sort of get a feel for the playground and the equipment here. And as you come through this plaza, we call it, you know, there will be people passing through and then some people are actually coming to the park. So we wanted this to be a space that tells people right away you're entering a different kind of park. So we have uh, an urban artist from San Francisco that's uh, put in what's called the stepping sounds. And when you roll through or you walk through, you're gonna hear some very pleasing sounds like splashing through water or walking through snow or through crunching leaves. So it's not an irritating sound, but it sort of will make you realize you're coming into a magical place. So uh, this will be uh, just, you know, this has been spot, well, the Peary family gave us a lot of money, so this is um, going to be their namesake, the Peary family entry plaza. And then I'm going to let Barbara maybe take you, so as you come through, we'll kind of loop around this way, and I'm also standing, this is the tot zone for the little kids. <coughs> Um, and in front of each of the zones, you'll see a pilaster, and you'll see a placeholder for what's going to come later. But basically, um, each of the zones is going to have not only the um, information, of course, what you have in the zone, the specific equipment, um, but we also are going to have a Braille signage and also um, the benefits of swinging, sliding. I mean, there's some real physical developmental benefits that come with each of these um, pieces of play equipment. We put a lot of thought into selecting them. We used an accessible expert and community members and real people, real children, um, and, and asked their opinions about a lot of stuff. And we were advised in the layout of this park that to for um, visually impaired and just in general those that have some cognitive limitations that it's important to um, put like uh, experiences together. So that's why we have a swinging zone or a spinning zone. Um, because for children that are visually impaired, we heard over and over again that they like to run. And a lot of times in the parks, they don't know what they're going to encounter. They might run and then, oh, there's a swing right there or there's something. So this way they know for planning purposes, this is a swinging zone. I'm going to be careful there or I'm going to be mindful of, um, of that. So um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the zones, but we'll have, so Barbara's going to be nice enough and, and uh, she's been working with her team on the playhouse and we can actually go up and inside. She'll guide you in there. Stop here. Um, so, when, when everything uh, I'll be careful. You can see it's kind of dusty right now. That's that's good. <laughs> but uh, so this is the this is the original magical bridge. This was Alinka's original idea, the name came from not just the metaphor of Magical Bridge, but also this bridge um, was going to be, you know, when Alinka first found this, it was just sort of just some trees and shrubs, and so she decided this was the great spot for the park, and, and I mean, it's so, she's so tireless in raising money and getting people to get on her vision with her. She came to me when I was at uh, doing a benefit for another Playhouse project, and she said, "You've got to do a wheelchair accessible one." And I was like, "Well, you're right." So you know, we've been 
trying to raise money and be part of the design team and everything. So this was the spot she picked, and then the city agreed to give it to her once she raised enough money. So it was really interesting. You know, wasn't it for a while the city didn't fully commit to it, right? Right. The city gave us the land and they gave us some money, but not much. Not much money, and to you know, we had to raise four million dollars. Yeah. To do this once, privately. So once we raised it, we were able to work th work with inclusion experts and work with the city. And then um, they gave staff, and then it became a reality. Right. So, but the bridge, I mean, we originally envisioned the bridge would get, um, we envisioned that the bridge would get um, redone, but it's not getting redone for a couple of years, right? It's so, getting a makeover. It's getting so a makeover. it's going to be so, visually, um, it's going to, it's going to look, quite beautiful yeah. but in a few years we're hoping that they're going to widen it and the city will take on that expense. So, but once the park's open right there is where you come through and this part will be the main bike part and there's going to be a, a fence here, a low fence here and then you'll come through here and we're going to have a, an entrance gate so it's going to be a gate so that kids, parents can feel okay about their kids in the play area and it'll let you know you're going into the park and it's going to have a sign up here saying that you've come to. We're still kind of debating what the sign is, but it's a magical bridge where everyone can play. Is that right? Place where everyone can play. Place where everyone can play. Yeah, so you would come through here and then you could either roll or walk down to the lower play area, the picnic area here, or you can come across the ramp. So this was the tricky part for me because I you didn't have a lot of, you couldn't change this. Okay. We wanted to get up to a second story playhouse. So just calculating how to get around the tree and up to a second story playhouse. And then this, as you can see, this ramp goes all the way out to the slide, what we call the slide mound out there. And there's um, three slides. And um, Alika will tell you more about that, the slide mound. But this is basically my part, trying to come up with. Barbara, are we able to, I mean, you haven't had a crowd up there. Are we allowed to kind of walk up in the end? You know, Probably not, but you know, if you want to, you we, know, I mean, we, it's not, we won't tell anybody. Yeah, it's not unsturdy. It's, it's, there's there's little uh, hiccups in it, but yeah, you can point up. <laughs> so everybody, be careful. Yeah, and tell us we're going to be giving you things. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, this is great. could go up and around. So will there be like more structure built around this tree as well? Or? No, this is it for the structure. It's just okay. sort of a tree deck. Okay. It's just an observation deck. And all these railings are having rope in them, so it looks a little open. That's why it's a little scary, so don't anybody okay. miss me. Yeah, it's, all, it's all what so Barbara, this is I mean, Barbara is here every day with her big crew and this is all hand stained, cut, yeah. carved, sanded. So much labor, yeah. All a la wow. we'll talk about a labor of love. Yeah. We're, we're very happy with Barbara's oh. work because we think it's pretty magical. And you haven't even seen the swinging bridges in Alinka. You oh can't God, you can't go on it really. That one that's no, where no, it's no, not to, but you know, when we've talked to a lot of these young people that grew up in this area, some of them in wheelchairs, and we had asked what you know, what their experience was with playhouses. Each and every one of them said they had never been inside of a playhouse. Why? It was just too narrow. There were the 
le ledges, you know, that prevented them from being in there. They couldn't turn themselves around. So it's such a, gosh, it's a, a simple thing to be able to play in a playhouse, and it was re remarkable that, um, you know, they were not designed with everyone in mind. So Barb is gonna, she's never going to design an un inaccessible playhouse. <laughs> so one of our well, I was gonna say so one of our board members, um, a beautiful young woman named Emily McQueen, who has four boys under the age of ten, she fell out of a tree in college and so she is now a paraplegic um, in you know uh, living her life mostly in, in the wheelchair. And she was very instrumental in the design of this whole playhouse because why? She wanted to get as high into the trees again as she could. And so she wanted this kind of a experience on the bridge. And so she came here with her boys last week and was just so thrilled that she could be up in the trees again. If I were her, I'd stay out of that area, but she was, she said, no, she's a risk taker. <laughs> so, well, she enjoyed it. So you'll just continue. Well, we call this the elevated. You guys come on down if you want to. There's plenty of room. Then you'll go over to. No, I have to go. You want to talk to all the other people? Anyway, anyway. from this part of the play area, but it was really hard. So, I mean, it would just take so much space and the mechanics and to house them all, to be safe for our kids, you know, it was like, so we figured next park. We'll get it in the next park. <laughs> Does that mean that their parents have to accompany them uh, throughout the whole park? No, I mean, not really. It just means that, I mean, it is a problem that the wheelchair will be up there and we'll have to come back around, but I mean, basically anybody can do it. <laughs> and, you know, they, uh, and, and they've tried to make all the openings up there so the wheelchair won't go down the slide because you really don't want that to happen. Okay. Yeah. But it's worked in other parks. So this part, you know, happens a lot where you, you have to go so slowly to get them up mm -hmm. to something high here in the wheelchair. So then, you know, it's kind of not an easy way to get the wheelchair back down to the bottom mm -hmm. of the slide, which... Yeah. That's hopefully not about safety risks. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What was, sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, what was the thought process behind the mound? The mound. Well, the the site was lacking in elevation, mm -hmm. and we wanted to have a lot of slides, and it seemed like it would really lend a lot to you know everything visually too, because this is all going to be covered with playground pad and artificial grass. So this is going to look oh, like kind of a grassy, the grassy knoll, you know. So mm -hmm. we're. Uh, and then kids can climb up this, they can slide down it a little bit. So we just felt that it was the most efficient way to get a lot of different sliding activities in and climbing and, and bringing everything up to that center circle. Yeah, and then this is actually a fence along here. And because um, that's like access to keep kids from going that way. There's Marco, who built most of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you tomorrow. We doing 7 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. So we're all <gasps> jamming. <laughs> oh, yes. We can go down to the lower See, that to get to the lower level, you have to be able to bring entertainers to the playground. I actually like being at a playground design because if you make it too easy, it gets to get, you know, you want to create. Um, travel, oh, yeah. lots of travel. So I found a lot of people always get it from kids who are not getting the sports that I should be playing. Yeah, I mean, if I can help it, it's like the most embarrassing part. So you know, 
kind of best lighting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I can do it from up here if you can hear me. Okay. Uh, sure. Down and I'll show you because I think it is hard to hear. Um, now, did you? Uh, so, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. So one of the things, and this is something that actually I will say was installed was installed incorrectly, and we need to fix it. But on the slides, a few of you had asked, "What about a wheelchair? You know, if you come, how are you, you know, able to make this easier for a wheelchair?" Um, and Dave knows this because last year we presented to your class and we talked about it. We really were looking for a creative. We were really looking for a creative way to make it easier for that parent that has a child using a wheelchair or for a parent using a wheelchair to be able to come down the slide and then somehow the wheelchair is there. Like let's say Joe wanted to go down the slide and he's here by himself. I mean somebody would have to bring the wheelchair to you. So long and the short of it is if you design anything that's really innovative, different in a playground, it needs to get vetted by uh, a board with the Playground and Safety Commission and so on. So even the best ideas, and we spent time with IDEO and other design firms to try to figure out ways around it, but for that reason, um, we did not do anything terribly different, but what we did create, and this is what is not correctly installed, but when you come down each of the slides, the vision was that if you are somebody that requires a little extra time to get either a wheelchair back to you or something, that you can easily slide over and other kids can come down the slide. Um, because, you know, kids are impatient and the last thing you want is for kids to tell you to hurry up when you really just can't. So. That's something that we thought would be helpful, and so those things uh, will get fixed. They're a work in progress. It's a work in progress. <laughs> um, but, you know, we just think that in general, I mean, with Jill, I mean, Jill has been fantastic in getting a lot of media out there. We thought today we'd give you a hard copy, but it'll come out probably in the next day or so. We were on the cover of another magazine um, locally, and we're really trying to get the word out that, you know, it's not really rocket science, but it's really designing with everyone in mind. And we really encourage, we don't want to be the only park in the world that does this. We really feel every community should take pieces of what we're doing here and encourage their own communities to do that, right? And so everyone is encouraged to uh, So we, to we're on, if you're on Facebook, be sure to like us because we're putting our updates pretty day, um, almost every day with updates and we're, talk, we're trying to get a national conversation going about inclusive play. So using this as a model for the country. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, in, in doing the uh, testers around here, besides the children that are visually impaired, cognitive, and wheelchair users, did you actually have able-bodied people use their um, devices to go through the patterns of the ground? Um, give me a little bit more about in what other you're words, um, engaging an able-bodied person to use the wheelchair. Somebody who is visually impaired, probably blindfolded, is able bodied, and has all faculties and they can go through that exercise. Yeah, so we actually, I mean, we did that before we did this playground. We went to the parks around here and, and did that um, to some degree, certainly. Um, but I mean, I think I think what you're asking is is a great question. We didn't do that yet for this part, but knowing all, we had done it with other playgrounds, and we've done it with a lot of different um, groups. And using that helped us sort of create what we had. We also used um, an accessibility, socially inclusive expert named Dr. Keith Christensen. Out of he works at the Disability um, Center out of Utah, and um, you know we really tried to get all the information we could to make it so that it is just right. Um, Once the playground is more complete, we are going to be bringing kids into the playground before we do open to the public to make sure that it's yes. safe, both for typical developing children as well as those that are in wheelchair but are visually impaired, right. that are autistic. And we'll go for a little bit more into like the retreat heads for children with autism, the delays are hard, and spending things. So we're, but we're we aware. welcome, we're going to have some soft openings, and not, you know, just ability. So, I'd be happy to have you come out and, and uh, you know, be part of that uh, kind of review process. I think it'd be a, a, a fascinating experience for an able-bodied person to well, go through the whole 
right aspect of it rather than the specific of somebody who's a right? <coughs> well, it's, you know, so what we did, and it's even on our website, we had a lot of able-bodied kids do that. In fact, the district has access to wheelchairs, um, you know, cognitively, visually impaired, and that was part of our awareness for the community because people couldn't believe that our parks were not friendly to everybody, and we even had kids go to the most accessible park in Palo Alto, and within five minutes, a bunch of teenagers figured out, okay, you can't even get into this park if you're in a wheelchair. So our city feels like the parks have been made friendly for everyone, but you know, you put somebody in a wheelchair for five minutes and they realize, oh, I can't get over this ledge, I can't get over the tan bark, I can't get over the sand. The sand so we did bark. those exercises quite a bit um, before we created this park to just open people's eyes to the fact that our parks really are not very inclusive, um, socially inclusive of everyone. Um, but of course, we'll continue uh, to do that. Yeah, no, we really would like you to, if there are any, um, you know, any holes in our design, we need to know about them. Okay, how are we doing on time? Who has the time? I do. It's uh, 5.13. Oh, okay. So, um, do you want to stay here and just kind of talk through the park a little bit more? And then, or do you want to just, does anybody want to go inside the playhouse? This is the Lee, um, the Lee Levy and Judy Yui um, picnic and performance area down below as well, for those that know Lee Levy. Um, but anyway, again, the vision was playhouse experience, Barbara's creating for us, and then down below is a little like a community stage. So if you feel like doing a little fun thing for your parents, you can. Our vision also is that on a regular basis, we will have some local people, whether it's a puppeteer, or maybe somebody that wants to read from a book they just wrote. But the idea is just to bring the community out here um, and to have people engaged. Um, we really encourage people to, you know, make friends with different kinds of people. And I think because there have not been parks open to everyone, really, um, younger children haven't maybe been exposed to a child that's different. and so. We feel that we're really trying to break down those traditional barriers so that later the bullying and all the stuff that later happens, you know, we're trying to rewind the clock, right? But if you haven't been exposed to different types of individuals, then you do form opinions and, and that's the whole problem. You just want to, to be mindful of the different kinds of people in our community. So, okay, so the... Um, the performance area and then right behind that is going to be our donor wall and next to that is what's called the kindness corner and I'm going to let Jill tell you about it because that is her thing, the kindness corner. So we um, are creating there's a wall with visual representation with words about being kind and an upstander and a good friend. Um, we're going to also have a large table with um, chairs that um, teachers from the local schools, so we're right next to Hoover, JLS, um, Fair Meadow, Abilities United, Achieve Kids, where teachers can actually bring students over and have classes to teach them about um, how to be a good friend to someone who may be different. Um, to be able to maybe do that social experiment where you know you go in wheelchairs and you, you are visually impaired and how this might be a safer playground actually that's really I just thought of that when you were, mm -hmm. when you were talking about it. Um, yeah, so we're calling it the Kindness Corner, um, and we're hoping that you know you'll even be able to come and lead discussions about. about we'll have a class here next year. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so we're gonna make it sure that it's big enough for a class. Um, but um, that came also out of just the community. You know, there's been so much going. You know, even on in the Palo Alto community with the recent suicide. You know, it just it's hard to be a kid. It's hard to, to be different. Um, and if this can spark conversation, we're really excited. And just yeah. tell them just in a nutshell, the other thing that we're excited about is the programs that are starting to bubble up and kids are excited about this, these kindness wands that we're doing, right. which are also kind of fun. Yeah, so, um, so what we've done is we've created, and, and if you go to our Facebook page and scroll back to uh, probably a month ago, you'll be able to see these wands that we're having um, children within the community create. Um, they're not perfect, but we're not perfect, right? We're, we're all a little imperfect. Yeah. Um, but what we're going to be doing is there's um, children are writing messages on these wands. And on opening day of the playground, they're going to be um, spread out throughout the park so people can take them and receive messages of kindness. And we're asking people to do something kind or to pass it along um, and let everyone know about the, the playground. So um, 
that's how we're bringing getting the community um, involved. So we certainly hope you'll join us for opening day. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, and then uh, what else can I, you know, the other thing I was going to mention is that for visually impaired um, individuals, we learned that the hue of blue is a color that they can differentiate more than any other color. So the poured rubber surfacing that will be throughout the park will primarily be in the blue tones. Um, and I don't know if you can see the equipment, but you'll see that's the spinning zone over there. And you'll see there's a carousel that all of this is flush to the ground except for that rotating um, piece of equipment, which is the right height for a trap platform zone. Um, but one of our board members, the dad who has three small children, was most excited about that carousel that goes round and round where you can get two wheelchairs in there and um, other people and you can just spin around. Um, everything here is uh, able for everybody. And then that round plastic thing is one of our retreat zones. So we learned that children with autism do get overstimulated. Um, they do need a place to sort of retreat into and, and observe for a while and then come back out again. So these are specifically for that or just, a, you know, somebody that wants to sit there for a while. Um, and then as you move in that direction, you'll see the Duplo swings. Those are, uh, you can lay on your stomach, you can lay on your back, you can stand on them. And then we also will have six bucket swings. Um, and swinging is what we call very serious therapy. So swinging was really what got me started with this park in the very first place. Because when my daughter was born and had some kind of issues uh, early, uh, we realized that they were saying swinging really helps. It sort of um, improves the, uh, it, it, it addresses the vestibular um, motion, which is essentially the inner ear and the inner ear fluids. Um, help you feel your sense of balance. Um, they help you understand your place, you know, with gravity and so on. And so it really does a lot to facilitate cognitive improvements. And because she couldn't hold on to the swings, you know, her upper body wasn't strong enough. That's where we realized, you know, there isn't even a swing here. So the swinging area will only be the bucket seats. Um, so typical kids love them because you have a back to, to sort of support yourself with. But if you have the need to really swing, it, it supports you properly. Grown-ups love them too. <laughs> yeah, grown-ups do, do consider them. But we also have some adult exercise equipment for those of us that want to hop on and do our own exercise while kids are doing their thing. Um, and then next to that is our laser harp. It's the music mm. zone in the laser harp. So um, this is really pretty fantastic. So Jen Lewin is a well-known artist who's been primarily doing, well, she does a lot of stuff, but she's been going to Burning Man for a long time and for about 20 years she's been creating these laser harps that have been installed in public places all over the world. They're bulletproof, they're safe, um, and they're really quite magical. So there's 24 lasers that you won't see. If you if you want to go on our website, she just tested it last week and it's just fantastic. You literally see her moving her hands and as the laser breaks with your hand or your wheelchair or whatever motion you're coming through there, it creates um, very pleasing sounds. Um, the idea is it sounds great if it's one kid or if it's a hundred kids. Um, she can make it a sound, she can make it the rustling of leaves, it can be words. Um, the trick was not to overstimulate uh, our visitors so that it's a sound that is pleasing, right? So that's the music zone, which is, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and we find children with autism particularly love the music experience because, you know, music taps into a different part of your brain than the verbal skill. So many of the children that do have autism are very creative musically and it gives them a chance to connect with kids, maybe not verbally, but with the music. Um, and then the slide zone is, is fun too. We've got that. What am I forgetting, Joe? Um, the top zone and picnic area. Uh, yeah, the picnic, picnic area. And then we're, this area here will be um, grass. We're here um, adjacent to Ability United, which serves um, hundreds of families with special need kids. Um, so this area eventually will get built out, we hope. Um, in the meantime, we'll be putting benches, we're putting grass, um, and make it a nice um, area. Yeah, the, the final thing well. I, I wanted you to know about too is that um, there's a new cafe that's at the library called Ada's Cafe. It's our good friend Kathleen that started that program. 
and um, they train young people with disabilities to work in the food industry. So we will be having a cart coming through here every afternoon, likely manned by our friends at Abilities United and maybe some typical community members. So they'll come through with, you know, pastries and things like that to sell, maybe um, costumes kids can borrow for the stage. And it's a way, again, breaking down those barriers. You know, maybe Johnny with Down syndrome mans the cart on Thursday. So next time you see him in town, you may not be so leery of saying hello. You'll say, oh, I know him from the park. You know, and all of a sudden, he's not Johnny with Down syndrome, but he's the guy that brings the muffins. And so slowly, you know, these kids are really going to start to feel part of our community, which they have not been up until now. So. Um, we really are excited. The programs are evolving. If you guys are, if any of this sounds appealing to you, we definitely welcome your involvement, input. Um, We'd love whenever. to have you opening day. Yes, we'll have you at opening day for sure, or before to, to check on things. Do you um, have any questions? Yes, indeed. Um, is opening day set currently, or is it it's still just a bit nebulous? Well, our opening day at this moment, and we are confidently saying March the 14th, which is a Saturday, because we also want to keep these fences up enough so that we can have different types of groups in to make sure everything is, is the way that it should be. So we think that's... that's we haven't officially announced Correct. it, but you're the first one to write this. <laughs> that, that's actually a good timing because that's the last week of class. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll aim for that date. <laughs> That's Barbara, right? Barbara, uh, are, are you going to have brightly colored balusters, or are you going to have cables? Uh, uh, this is going to be rope uh, rope netting to give it uh -huh. sort of a treehouse feel. That's lashed to uh -huh. the wood and then handrail. Uh huh. Too. Yeah. And the windows in there all get um, these metal, uh, thin but very safe grates, so the kids won't tumble out the window. Uh -huh. But we were, what we were good. struggling with with the design on this was to enclose it enough as a playhouse but make sure it's open enough that people don't worry what are the kids doing up there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's what we were trying with lots of you know open air for good yeah. supervision. So, as you go down, everybody, please be careful that there are no balusters, so it will be very easy to fall. Yeah, and everybody watch out for the blankets. Oh, and, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell anybody I let you up here, okay? Yeah. Especially my pictures. insurance. But we won't let anybody know. No. It'll be, your, we'll, uh, it'll be our secret. So, and if I can help somebody uh, higher here, let me know. My sister. Can I help my sister. Anybody? My sister was killing too. She's like, this is perfect. What? Yeah. 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 And that, that just yeah, we did that. Or a bridge. There will actually be another bridge that will be actually. So that'll have the same venue stuff. Yeah, it's going to have a handrail and the whole story. Well, that's right. You will, or you will. I'm going to be here 15 What do you think? So, safe for wheelchairs, you're going to have some sort of a thing. I'm going to be here. Hey. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad the weather worked out for you. Did you go in there? It really has a nice feel in there. I mean, um, haven't been in there. Yeah. Mitchell Park. <laughs> Mitchell Park. Yeah. Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they just sort of uh, fit this in. This was there was nothing here except trees and grass. I didn't realize um, that was going to also have those features like for kids with autism. Yeah. That's really cool. accessible in a lot of different ways. I want to play on this thing so bad. Yeah, <laughs> well, you just have to come back.
Let's get all the oh, students. <laughs>